Well, welcome everyone uh, to my presentation about uh, extending um, core widgets in QGIS with the help of PyQGIS. It's getting a little bit technical, but um, it's mainly to show you what could be possible. First, uh, some words about me. As Martin said, I'm Dave Signer, working at OpenGIS.ch. We are a Swiss company dedicated to open source, uh, around 20, 20 people, mostly working in Switzerland as well. And at OpenGIS, I'm a software engineer mainly, um, a core developer, QGIS core developer, as well as plugin developer. Um, in Python. Um, what is the situation we have in QGIS? We have lots of really nice and useful widgets we can use in the form. Here are just some example here um, to select a number with a slider or to have the daytime widget, to have multi-line text editor then in the middle to attach pictures or documents with a preview. And above, one of my favorite widgets, the relation reference widget, where you can select a parent object with a drop down. And additionally, you have there some buttons to jump on the parent features and so on. Then here to edit pi, um, JSON values, JSON maps and multiple selections and so on. As well, you have uh, a big uh, value of um, configuration possibilities. Here as well, the relation reference widget where you can uh, select to show the buttons or to remove the buttons, to have it visible or not, to set filters, or here in the value map widget to add a value map, um, some values you can have as lookup values. And this is all very useful and makes your work efficient. But what if we need more? What if we have a specific use case where we do not have enough functionality in a widget or if we have even worse, too many functionalities? If widgets are overloaded with options and the users are uh, confused, then you would like to have a more simple widget there as well. And the third thing, maybe it doesn't just don't look like you wish that it looks. And so what can we do? We can uh, superpower the widgets. Now, um, to create a mutant, to create a superhero, you need to know its anatomy first. And um, a widget in QGIS, what you have seen before, basically consists of three main components. The first is the widget itself. It's actually not a widget like a Q widget. It's more like a widget wrapper, something wraps all the buttons, drop downs, etc., uh, of the widget together. And here, the example, like it's coded, the QGIS daytime editor, edit wrapper is based on a, a base class, the editor widget wrapper, and all the widgets in QGIS, the form widgets, are um, based on this base class. Then the second um, component is the configuration, what we've seen with activating, deactivating buttons. It's here as well, the daytime edit config inherits the editor config. Oh, this is, oh yes, the editor config widget. As well, a common base class here. And then the third one is the factory. It's mainly, to, uh, yeah, it's um, mainly a class to create the two other components on runtime and give it the name and so on. Well, this means we have these three base classes exposed to the Python API of QGIS, to the uh, PyQGIS API. And now we can use them to create our own widget. I made here a super simple example. I show you in a small video. It's 
about to have uh, the use case is that we want to have a button and we want to press on it and then it generates us a UUID, a unique ID, and we press it again, it generates it again, and so we can uh, have in the end, in the field, the value that is lost displayed. So, it doesn't run on the screen. Mm. Let's see if this works. No. Ah, maybe I I need to start it here. Oh yes. Here I have the three classes. The first is my new example widget, inheriting the editor widget wrapper from the QJS core. I add here just one button and the functionality to create the UUID. Then I have the configuration. Here it's inheriting as well the core class. Then I have here a checkbox, simple checkbox, where I can activate or configure if the button in the form should be flat or not. And the third thing is the factory. And in the end, I have the register, uh, registry to register the button and make it available. Now I did that, and now when I join here the field UUID, I go to the widgets and I have my example widget with my own configuration here. And now when I open it, it's not super fine-tuned, but here is a button and I can click, 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 and it generates a new UUID. Well, this gives us the possibility to create um, whatever widget we want to have in QJS. Um, but because the, the base class is in, um, ex exposed to the API, but not the widget wrappers itself, it's not everything possible. Um, it's possible to create all the widgets kind of uh, based on the base class, but you cannot take the relation reference widget with all the buttons and take this in your Python code and add an additional button. And why it's not possible? Um, because only the base class are exposed to the API and not the single widgets. And why is that? Um, I honestly don't know. But as a Python developer, of course, I wish that everything is available in the API. Every core functionality is possible to, ex um, to use, to expand. But um, from the perspective of uh, QGIS developer, of course, if you have everything exposed to an API, you have to um, ensure the backwards compatibility if you make change for every single function. And I guess this is the reason, because it's, uh, if you don't expose something if you don't know that it's really used. And yeah, maybe in future we can uh, make available some widgets we want to use, but at the moment these basic widgets are not exposed. Only the base, and then we can refactor it and create a new widget like I showed you before. Now there is one excep exception. There is one widget that is exposed, not only its uh, base class, and this is the relation editor widget. Um, first, what does the relation editor widget, it uh, manages the children, and that's why I use this uh, silly background image. In QGIS, it looks more like this. This here is a attribute form from a feature building, and a building has a relation to multiple apartments. So these are the children objects, and they are this here, what we see here is all the, well, this part is the relation editor widget with a list of the single apartments. And then you have here the form, and here we even have another relation editor widget in the form. Now, if we want to superpower the relation editor widget, we check the anatomy uh, of this. It looks more or less the same, like with the 
with the normal widget. We have the relation editor widget based on an abstract base class, the relation editor config widget based on an abstract base class, and we have the factory. Let me show you um, an example here as well. Now I have to go again here to this. Yes. Uh, oh, here it is. Um, let's maybe first uh, mention what it should do. Um, here I create a new relation editor widget based on the base class, having all the functionality in the background, but not having the GUI of the relation editor widget. Because I only want to have here another button counting the children objects. And here I, uh, and I have to press again. Here I have an example relation widget based on abstract relation editor widget. Then I add a layout, I add a button, I add a, a, a label where the text is displayed. And here I have the configuration and I have the, uh, the checkbox to activate if it's flat or not and to set the text. Then I have the factory and in the end the registry. And I start it and now I can go to the configuration of the form, choose the relation editor and here I go to the example and now the original uh, configuration disappears and here is my new configuration. I uh, set some config, it's a flat uh, button now, that's here and when I press it, the linked features are counted. Or here, with another feature, three linked features. That is um, the, when we inherit the base class and now, as we say, we have here, oh now it's out of focus, I guess. Duck. Um, here we have another situation where we inherit the relation editor widget itself because we don't want to have the GUI disappeared, we just want to add new functionality. And this can look like this. Oh no, again, the wrong screen, sorry. Here, we don't inherit the abstract relation editor widget, we uh, inherit the real relation editor widget and add the new buttons, the same buttons like before. It's actually beside the, that it inherits the real widget, it's the exactly same code. And now when I um, check it out, I can select it and I have the original configuration still here and additionally I have here my new configuration. I leave them like them they are and now when I open it I see I have here the uh, normal relation editor with the list of apartment and here below I have my new, uh, new buttons and texts to the widget added. I link some more, press it again and then it counts them again. Now um, Enough from examples, let's enter the real world. Uh, how is it used in reality if for customers, users that wor really work with it? Um, I have here three examples um, we did in the last few hours, uh, hours, years, sorry. <laughs> they are not that simple like the examples before. This one is the ordered relation editor, the second the document management system and the third is the linking relation editor. Um, let's have a look first at the ordered. The ordered relation editor, the request was there to have, um, in this example, you have a building with the apartments and you have a level of the apartment on what floor it is. And to manage those, uh, uh, apartments, um, you, the request was that you can drag and drop them up and down and the level gets um, edited um, concerning on what order it stands. I show you it an example.
This is how it is with the normal relation editor. I have three apartments. I have here a level. And now I uh, choose the ordered relation editor. Those are all plugins. When we install the plugin, we have it available here. Then I select the, the level, the ordering field, and a nice display expression. And when I have a look at it now, it looks like this. You see the, the, the level is written in the display expression. And when I take it and move it, the level gets uh, edited like on what order it is. And as well, it's written to the field here. This is in real life. The customer here has poles with traffic signs, and he wanted to set which one is on on what order. Let's go to the next real world example, the document management system. Um, in a, ah, I do it every time on the wrong screen. Um, usually it looks like this. You have child features that has documents attached to it, but you have clicks through them to see uh, all the pictures. And it would be nicer to have kind of a view, like a gallery for pictures, for example. And for that, we created a document management system widget. You can configure the uh, documents, pause. And then when we have a look at it now, it looks like this with those two features. We have kind of a gallery view. We can uh, um, see the, the attributes. We can open the image or we can with uh, right click open the form as well to edit it. Cool, um, now let's come to the last real world example. This is the linking relation editor and uh, it's a good example of not the, the first two using the base clause of the relation editor. They don't use the real relation editor widget. But because you have seen the, the GUI looks um, very different to the original one. And this here, here we have been unhappy or the users have been unhappy with the linking possibility of the normal relation editor widget. But they still want to have that it looks like the normal relation editor widget. Just with the linking they have been unhappy. I can show you why. Uh, I have to get, yes. Here we have the um, apartments linking to allotment gardens, and here we can link them. That means this uh, GUI opens, and with this, the user has been unhappy because there are kind of two ways of selection there is an index selection and a real yellow selection. And when it opens the linking, we want now. Which one we link? Oh, we don't link the flowers, but we wanted to. We have to select it with the yellow selection. Now, is the veggie garden unselected? No, it's still linked. And this is quite confusing. And so we created a new graphical interface for it. And yes, we can select it as well in the configuration. Oh, no, another thing. Here, in this use case, we have a linking table in between, and there are attributes on this linking table. Does the apartment own the garden or lease the garden, and so on? And those are not really possible to edit in the current relation editor widget. When you make a link, it just makes a link. It doesn't, you cannot, can never, uh, nowhere set the attribute. Here, you see, we still have the, the the configuration of the base class of the original widget, and additionally, our new settings. And when we have a look at it now, it looks the same like before. But when we click on the linking, we have a new dialog. This is kind of a linking manager. It's much more easy to understand, oh, now the ones of, of the left are not linked, the ones of the, on the right are linked. And I can set the, the attributes of the link. 
as well, we added some simpler search. If you have long lists, then you have this easy text search. Of course, you still have this very powerful um, filter options, but for, yes, they are complex as well. So we made this simpler thing here. We can select the feature on the map as well. We want to link or we can jump to the feature. And yes, with this, um, it's much easier for those people to work. And they are in the end linked like before. Uh, final question. Here you can get the plugins and uh, you can have it in the plugin repository as well, of course. And here is the final question, why we did that, these cool features, or in my opinion at least, cool features not directly in the core, why we did uh, the own plugins. And there are some reasons, if the use case is very specific, of course, you shouldn't mess up the core. But the question is, anyway, when we create such a thing, we are not sure in the end how much will it be used. Should we really make 100 widgets in the relation editor widget where the user don't know which one to choose? And so uh, the decision was more, you can create a plugin, try out how it feels and looks. And in case yes, everyone thinks, hey, we need that in the QGIS default core, then you already have the concept, you already have the look and feel, and to code it in the core, then the effort would be small. Well, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. All right, thank you very much, Dave. So, uh, questions, please. Uh, while you are thinking, so uh, let me ask, do you, do you get these requests often uh, that uh, uh, people need their custom widgets like this? Yeah, actually, um, I think Often people don't really know that this is possible. Or another thing is that they, um, uh, if they have specific use cases, then we create a plugin for them with, of course, the user ma a mask that is uh, especially made for them, then we don't need this. And this is some, something in between when we see, ah, this user wants to have something, and we think lots of other users could use it as well, or we, even know oh, this customer has this pro problem for a long time, then we decide, oh, this could be a plugin only for this widget. Actually, the second one was a request, uh, the third one with the linking was a request um, to improve uh, the Model Baker plugin. I don't know if anyone knows, it's a Swiss thing to import this Interlis uh, data format. and. When, when they, they, these databases are created, you have lots of relations. And then uh, they wanted to have an improved GUI. And then we thought, oh, don't integrate it directly into Model Baker, make a plugin for it so other uh, users can use it as well. And uh, yeah, often uh, those are the main three topics. And I think they came up in the last two or three years. That's, yeah, mainly it. Yeah, I, I think it uh, shows yeah that uh, maybe we even need to do some UX improvements, like generally to the relation mm -hmm. widgets, which are let's say like uh, very powerful, but maybe not always the easiest to use for maybe some common cases, uh, like you shown with the uh, uh, selection, selection yeah. versus what is yeah. active, which. Uh, yeah, arguably is probably a bit confusing. <laughs> yeah. As a, uh, yeah, yeah, and I think you as a um, QJS uh, developer as well, you know how it is when you think, hey, let's improve it like this. Then someone else thinks, ah, oh, but I'm pretty used to have these two selections. I want to keep them. And it's always hard then to bring something to the core. And so we decided first we make a plugin. And yeah, if there are lots of voices we want to have it in the core, then it would be cool to attach it to the core as well.
Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So, thank you very much again for the presentation. And as usual, we have a small present uh, for you. Thank you. Very so, much. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.